Hey YouTube, this is my first video, so feel free to not be kind in the comments. Just tell me what I need to do, what I need to fix. Uh, like, subscribe, I'll be doing more of these videos. I'm getting a capture card soon, so I'll be able to post more things. Thank you so much for watching, and this is what I think a Star Wars game should be, but it could be any game. The one thing that really drives me nuts in gaming today is really just binary choices. Like, let's just say Bioshock, for instance. You would grab a little sister, it would be the choice between do you want to kill her and get the XP and experience, or do you want to let her live and just feel better about yourself? Me personally, um, I accidentally killed one of them, but I saved all the rest. That being said, probably would have been a better game if I just killed them all. I think you get some money and you get some uh, stuff at the end, but it wasn't worth it. Um, it would have been much better to upgrade all my powers and whatnot like that. There's one thing that I've thought about a lot lately, which is the lack of real choices. Here's a Star Wars game that I've always wanted. I'm just using Star Wars as an example because there hasn't been really a good Star Wars game in a really long time. It seems like a perfect world for this kind of thing. Say you start as a ensign or a private in the Imperial Army. Everyone starts as a private in the Imperial Army, but that being said, you can work your way up by doing things that the Empire wants you to do. Take out these people over here, take out these rebels over here. Civil disobedience is still disobedience. Take them out. It seems like something the Empire would do. You can make this all kind of set through the, the Jedi period, like when they were basically wiping them out. Now, how great would it be if on a part by part basis, there would be like a tech tree that basically said, so you have a choice to do this, which is what we're asking you to do. But if you go against it, then wouldn't that be basically a rebel event? So if you went against it and you chose not to execute these people or not to do this or not to save these people or not to do whatever, like say you had um, people on your squad, they shot a whole bunch of innocents civilians or whatnot like that, and then you had the chance to save them later. If you were to save them, then you would get a medal and, you know, whatnot, and maybe move up in the Empire ranks. But if you didn't save them, then they kind of deserved it. So it gives you the chance to kind of have multiple different levels, um, varying levels of complexity of your choices. Now, the great thing about this is, is that it's not just one or the other, but it's more of a, you're moving up in the Empire ranking, until you don't, and then you split off into the rebel ranking. If you're quick enough, maybe you can go back into Empire or maybe play both sides. Eventually, you're gonna wanna have to do one or the other probably towards the end of the game. When you're moving in one of these levels, you could play multiplayer events that would be taking locations or factions or whatnot like that, like an overworld map. Uh, Chrome Hounds had a really good map, I remember. Also, uh, World War II Online, I think, was another one where it had this massive map, and then it would show where action was actually being done, but it was really just maps. They were just maps. But depending on how many times that the, let's just say in the Star Wars reference, the Empire would win it, or the Rebels, they're basically terrorists, but the rebels, the people on these planets, would believe that the rebels would be freedom fighters. In the multiplayer arena, they would fight in these maps, whatnot like that, depending on if they win or they lose or whatnot like that, and you would go up in rank. Now, the ranking system would be different. It would be less military in the uh, rebel side or whatnot like that. But as you move up and as you rank up and as you do more things, um, that would affect your score even in the single player game as well, which would give you better gear or possibly better force abilities um, as you move up in the rebel ranking. Maybe you have metachlorians or whatever the force, whatever they end up saying that it is in the seventh movie. It would be a fun way to have a complex choice. You really feel like you were bought into something, um, that you were in it, you know, all the way. You were all the way in Empire um, you know, soldier, protecting the lands, protecting the interests of the empire, or you would be a rebel, protecting the people. The empire, they believe that they might be doing the, the right thing. I mean, you know, by keeping everything under control, holding their economy and handling all of that stuff, whereas in the rebels would believe that those places should be free, free for their own free market uses, free to do whatever they want to do, not actually work for the empire. 
but you would be bought in. There would be no good or bad side. There would just be a side that you chose, and then you played in multiplayer, and you'd really try to rank up. And eventually, you could always shift over. Um, and in the single player, it would give you the ability to do so. Playing a multiplayer match with, you know, 16 on 16 or whatever like that, and people who have gone all the way through the single player and gone all the way through this, like some of these people have force powers or whatnot like that. And then, here's a third part. What if there's the uh, the in-betweeners like um, like bounty hunters or smugglers so you'd have bounty hunters and smugglers so you could kind of fall in between and just kind of drop off that all together I don't think that that would probably be very necessary in the multiplayer but maybe it could be like another side game of some sort smuggle weapons to the to the Empire or to the rebels it just seems like a fun idea I mean obviously the amount of money that would be that that would be required to create something like this would be massive but that being said i mean destiny took all that money for a 10-year deal and they don't have the star wars name it just seems like the star wars game i've always wanted to play but it's not just a star wars game i've always wanted to play it's a game i've always wanted to play something that i felt like i was moving up instead of just making these binary choices between do i want to be a bad guy or a good guy do i want to collect all the blue shards or the red shard like it's you would actually make these choices and move up and you'd be invested. That was something that maybe Destiny wanted to do, but I don't feel invested because I don't feel like I'm a part of anything. We're just guardians fighting against each other in the multiplayer. It doesn't make any sense. In a Star Wars game, you have this huge universe of all these different things you can do and the ability to like create your characters and whatnot like that. I mean, you know, there's plenty of humanoid characters. Obviously, there's the bounty hunter characters and stuff like that, like crazy shock troopers and crazy whatever and then you got like IG-88 looking dudes or like, you know, maybe some Greedo looking guys. But anyway, either way, it's a universe that exists and there's no reason why they can't tap that uh, potential. And it seems like Star Wars would be a really good fit for this. You could do this with a whole slew of different types of games that would require different things as long as they had two distinct factions and maybe some in-betweeners. I thought it was a cool idea. And I wanted to share it with you, YouTube, and see what you thought about it. Tell me what you think about it in the comments below. I'd love to read them. Uh, that being said, this is one of my first videos, so I'm just kind of testing the waters and figuring out how I'm supposed to do all this stuff. So you can give me comments on how terrible I am or how great this is. It doesn't matter. Anyways, thank you, YouTube.